Yas Queen. We have two uh, forces, very powerful ladies coming at each other. We have the Tomb Kings on one side, Queen Kalita, and the other Queen. Uh, it's going to be Princess, or I'm not sure what her noble title is, but it's Isabella von Karstein here. Um, so quite the animosity between them, but this is going to be pretty cool. She has her blood uh, cup here um, and the blue dazzling eyes. But who is the most uh, wonderful queen of them all, the queen of the desert, or the queen of the graveyards? We'll see here. Um, her mount is definitely pretty dope here, and she does have the bluer, more bedazzled eyes. Uh, so in terms of our forces, it's going to be uh, myself and Indy Pride facing off. I have, well, we both have large armies, which is why you're seeing so many troops deployed, uh, knowing that it'd be going against a fair amount of monsters and units uh, that were pretty scary for my infantry. I decided to bring a fair amount of skeleton spearmen, backing up some archers. So a lot of these little functional groups. So a pair of archers here, backed up by two skeleton spearmen on the left, and they have a tomb prince next to them. Another tomb prince with a similar formation over here. Uh, Kalita is going to be bouncing between the two because she has buffs for archers just to help them out. Uh, in the rear, kind of in the center, I have another one of my uh, spearmen, but this time it's going to be uh, Nakesh's Scorpion Le uh, League, or Legions, sorry. And he's backing up two archers, so cool guys with some of the uh, more elite versions hidden in the back. I have some Tomb Guards as well and some Nehekara Horsemen. Uh, position in the rear as well just to wait and shark so the units in the front are supposed to do initial combat against uh, rain, uh, flying units and monsters with their bow fire and then just you know fall back to the spears if the pressure is on once the enemy closes with their infantry I can hit them pretty hard with some of my horsemen and then I have a pretty big blob over here skeleton warriors Nehekara warriors uh, tomb guards with halberds again anti-infantry with Ushapti great bows and a hyro titan as well so this is pretty good. Uh, this force here, the Ushabdu with Great Bows, obviously can take out big monsters and targets, um, Blood Knights, etc. Same with the Halberds here. They should be able to hold out pretty well against monsters, as well as the Hyro Titan. Uh, he's been doing great work and always feeling these guys with the Necrotex to help them out as well. Um, so it's a pretty formidable force. But same thing goes for the um, forces of Isabella as well. Oh, and I also have two Scorpions uh, who were Vanguard deployed. One of the cool things about them is that you can deploy them outside of your well, deployment zone. So the bows are moving forward. They're going to start to prick out at the enemy air force. Uh, Indy has brought a couple fell bats, anticipating that I would have archers. And he wanted to shut them down. They're also going to be here to provide some cover for a pair of terror guys. Pretty good, uh, powerful move there. These guys are going to be very good for getting around the battlefield, landing amongst my rear lines, tearing them up, and then taking off again and regenning. And he also probably wanted to control uh, the skies uh, for other reasons, uh, allow him to uh, protect his uh, cavalry. So he has two Blood Knights on this flank as well, and uh, some more uh, Blood Knights in the rear. So a very mobile force that he can use to, uh, to go around, but it's being countered pretty well with my pick of Archers and Spearmen. That's going to rebuff these early advances. But the main line is going to be moving forward. Let's take a look at this. This is going to be uh, zombies up to the front. Tearing it up a little bit with more uh, capable infantry are going to be Crypt Ghouls, and then their Big Daddy variant, the Crypt Horrors behind them, main line of that, uh, as well as some Vargulfs sprinkled in between, and then some Grave Guard as well. So, pretty um, sandbaggy force in the front that slowly tears up into more scary forces. Lots of big damage dealers hulking around, lots of armor and armor piercing as well. So, this could probably chew through my infantry line pretty handily and so I have to take my engagements uh, well so my uh, strategy here going forward is gonna be to try and force him away with some of my bows shut down some of his units in the sky or at least uh, repel them and then start to move up with my guys here Nekar horsemen and some of these tomb scorpions can do a pretty brutal strike against his infantry now core horsemen are anti-infantry so they should be able to knock his guys about if they can stay out of the crypt horror uh, attacks and I'm bringing forward uh, some of my spearmen as well because I know I'm going to have to rebuff some of his monsters. And I have a little bit of a choke here, uh, a formation uh, in the sand where I can kind of hold him at the ridge here. And then my forces on the right are just going to stand still and try and fire at his blob. Uh, this is a pretty sturdy, well-ground uh, right wing. Saving some guys in the rear as well because here comes Indy circling about. Bows are going to start to fire. Just being able to hold the line here is being very beneficial. Reload rate has been beefed up by a nearby Kalita. But these bats doing a good job of drawing fire from the uh, the Blood Knights. So pretty good on them. 
taking them out of the sky. And in the rear here, I got some more uh, bows firing at them as well. And the Ushamti with great bows could turn around. I'm a little bit worried about doing that just now. Um, mostly because the, the I could fire into them and I can do some damage um, while they're isolated. But if he gets out of here, he should be able to uh, pull out and uh, regen pretty quickly. But with some focus fire here, that's a lot of damage against these terror guys. So I'm just warning Indy not to land these guys here. I'm going to try and get a pretty rancid breath off against me. Doing some health, killing one unit. But overall, the breath spells just don't seem to do too much against the Ushamti. I guess it's the fact that they're just spread out uh, as such. So they're going to be doing pretty good. And yeah, I'm just daring Indy to land here. He's going to try and get probably another breath spell, or at least fly over my guys. Breath against the Necrotech, but really not being very good. And then the rear here, going to start to hit his guys, armor piercing. So this... Uh, Terror Geist is taking a lot of damage. My bows also can fire into them uh, to see them off. The main line is going to be joined here, so I've been able to rebuff his rear. Uh, he's positioned himself pretty nicely with the Blood Knights, etc., but I'm just shuffling around the Spearmen to guard against the rear, and I can focus on the central action here. And this is a pretty heavy-hitting force that I have to start to prepare for. These Ushabti are firing at the Terror Geist, doing some damage, uh, but they would much rather be shooting, uh, picking apart some of the, the Sternsmen, the Crypt Horrors, etc., because we'll see how I can handle this. The main advantage I do have is there is a tar pit here that might be able to trade with my guys, but to get the most cost-effective uh, trade, what I'm going to do is come in with my Nekar Horseman and try and knock about these fodder cheap infantry. So we spend enough time on slow motion. Let's go ahead and press play. And a downhill charge plus anti-infantry bonuses is going to be great. So that's one of the charges. Here come the other one crashing through the pots and just sending these guys up, up, and away. Crib Horse should be able to take them out pretty well. But that's fine, I'm going to reform the line with my Skeleton Warriors and just hold out. do have some Spearmen positioned here as well, and they're going to greet these monsters uh, quite eagerly. I also have some bows uh, continuing to be uh, guarded by these Spearmen to fire into this. So overall, it's going to be, be, be a bit of a killing field. He is penetrating through the center, but again, I have some bows. His guys, his bats are going to try and land in amongst my units. I do have some Tomb Guard here, so we should be able to rebuff them, and this right flank is so well anchored in Indy, having a lot of guys circling around, not willing to charge. These bows did get out of range, uh, they were told to fire in this direction, uh, but he's been disengaged, so that was a little bit of micro-lapsed. Uh, I should have been continuing to uh, focus fire on the terror guys, who's now going to start to regen. Should have been focusing on some of the big units to continue to get the fire on, but the rear lines are pretty well defended, um, seeing off these bats. And he's going to get a bit of a charge with these Blood Knights against my guys while I'm busy trying to micro the center. Pulling in some of my uh, Nekar Horsemen to try and hold down these Crypt Horrors. Got a Tomb Prince as well as some Skeleton Spearmen to hold the line pretty decently. So I'm pretty happy about this. And some of those guys in the front are crumbling, although it is just zombies for the time being. But Nekar Horsemen can shark around in the back and hit these guys. The main threat though is going to be um, the final strike of these Horsemen. Right into my bows. Do have nearby troops, but that was uh, an unwarranted or unnecessary loss for my units there. I'm going to charge in, try and do some damage on this front. Spearmen were nearby, so I should be able to rebuff these Blood Knights pretty handedly. Same thing with the bats. And yeah, here's a horseman charge into the rear of the Grave Guard. So evening the odds pretty well, and I'm holding strong, although this position here is being uh, beaten back pretty well. I uh, just have a single Tomb Prince holding out against a whole bunch of monsters. And here comes another strike in the rear. I did pivot my guys around, uh, Kefra Guard, up there taking a lot of damage. Going to get some regen off on them, and some of my own horsemen coming in here. So this is going to help hold the main line, but he does have some Crypt Ghouls charging in. Tomb Guard are going to hold them back. Tons of damage happening here. And more raised dead with Isabella uh, to get my guys um, just pinned. So he's going to penetrate, punch through the center where my units are crumbling. I'm starting to take down his grave guard with repeated strikes from the back. Uh, but the monsters are going to be a problem here. My Ushamti have been kind of drawn out of position. You can see they still have a lot of ammo on them. Uh, and I was trying to give uh, attack orders on these um, Blood Knights. They seem to have been bugged out, wanted to charge forward. Now they're going to be out of position, which can be deadly, but the Halberds are going to move up. They are going to be... Indy's going to want to trade with them using his Graveguard. These guys, I mean, well-armored, armor-piercing. They would love to trade against my guys with Halberds. Uh, these Halberds, I do want to save them for anti-large. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait him in uh, for a charge and then exchange out the Nehekar Warriors going to be trading more cost effectively and then save these guys for more opportune engagements. 
Let's watch a little bit of the chaos happening down here in the center. With all sorts of monsters. And the Tomb Scorpions were thrown into this position, which was starting to crumble. They're going to be doing a good amount of disruption against his guys, but the Crypt Horrors, uh, once, and the, I guess the Crypt Ghouls, all these units, big entities, uh, Blood Knights as well, once they surround my guys, they're going to be doing pretty good uh, against them. So not the best of picks to bring these Tomb Scorpions, but they're helping out decently, and I have two of my Tomb Princes as well, plus Kalita. So they have, let me put this on slow motion real quick, Kali, uh, the Tomb Princes, I believe, do have the ability... Um, I can't click on it, but anyways, they have like a defender ability, which means that I believe nearby lords do have buffs to their uh, to their resistance. So that's going to be pretty resilient. All of my lords in the center here helping to um, stymie this. And here's that little bit of, of an exchange that I was talking about where he did want to come in with these Sternsmen and Graveguard, swap them out for the Hakara Warriors, pull back the Halberds and save them. And they're going to be actually in a good position to see off these Blood Knights. So sequestering the rear lines, gaining back control, allowing my bowmen to now fire into the mix here. And we're starting to... Uh, to do a pretty good amount of damage, although the terror guys being really good monster killers against the scorpion there. These guys are more intended as anti-infantry. Uh, would do great against uh, Great Guard, but here, not going to be trading too well. And you shop T here, with a ton of ammo, would have been great to save them in the rear lines and ping units, uh, but they've been forced to be uh, pulled in to do some uh, anti-infantry tasks. Which they'll do pretty decently. And then also we have the Hyra Titan as well. And he's going to be huge uh, here, going uncontested. Going to really help me force back these Grave Guard and Sternsmen. Awesome unit here. Terror Geist would love to um, duel him and do a lot of damage. Uh, but for the time being, he's going to be allowed to uh, circle about. Halberds are also positioning themselves to guard against Hammer and Anvils. And then we're going to circle around in the rear and recommit to the mid. Lots of bow fire in the center. Crypt Ghouls are crumbling, but uh, we do have Isabella as well in the center. So the two queens are going to face off. But the Scorpion's also helping out to suppress this. So it's just a gangbang in all directions. Going to do that uh, area of effect explosion to pull her out of there. It'd be really important because she was starting to take some damage. And then it also does some poison uh, against the enemy. Uh, but they are getting a mass heal there. Bows are firing into the center. Pretty good against that, and then the Tomb Prince is doing excellent work to sustain uh, some of my units. Scorpions toss her out, but uh, some of his big monsters here. Oh, they are getting critical binding, so yeah, my front lines, not much I can do to hold out against the enemy. I did need some more armor piercing stuff uh, to deal with these units, so the uh, traditional warriors of the desert not doing so well. And against these monsters, don't have too much, would have liked to have maybe some more. Um, Halberds around these positions to see these guys off because once they're in the rear lines They're just gonna go around and swap my guys away uh, around and As well as uh, the fact that I would have loved to have those who shopped you with great bows uncommitted in the rear sniping his crypt ghouls So that's what I'm gonna be doing here pulling them out of the fight and rejoining the archers here Mass units firing into the mix Although the Blood Knights are coming around, finding some more archers in the rear. So all the uh, spearmen that had initially initially, uh, initially, sorry, were thrown into the fight. They are doing pretty good to hold against some of these monsters. Uh, but overall, would have loved to have maybe one or two. I keep saying I would have loved to have more units. That's how things go, don't they? But yeah, here's the focus fire that I needed with the Ushamti as well. Lots of stuff here. And we're going to see just how quickly these Blood Knights are going to start to melt. Once these Ushamti notch their arrows. Yeah, these guys are real uh, cavalry killers. So this is a pretty good uh, answer <laughs> to not having spearmen and stuff in the rear lines. Just able to melt these blood knights. Yeah. And he's going to circle around and he's going to notice that, yeah, these Ushop D need to go. So the blood knights anti-large should be able to kill them pretty handedly. Might want to pull out with these skeleton spearmen or something. And yeah, they're going to thrash these Ushop D. So really great counter uh, to bring blood knights. They're going to be excellent picks against um, forces like this. Ooh, and a breath spell coming in here. Uh, doing... Looks like a decent amount of damage. Kalita going to come and pick at the rear. Let's take a, uh, a gander at the battlefield. Uh, so my main problem is I have infantry kind of uh, laying about everywhere. Trading decently against Indy's infantry. But I have no real counter at this point to his, uh, his lords and monsters. That are swarming about uncontested. My monsters are uh, being answered pretty handedly. Uh, meanwhile, he has a fair amount of mobility, so I still have kind of numbers and in basic infantry, uh, 
my main lords are being focused, so things are not looking go too good for me. Uh, we'll see if I can hold out. The main advantage I do have has been on this right flank the whole time. Uh, lots of elite infantry, um, a higher titan, obviously, with a lot of health. These halberds being a godsend. That's one of the main things that I'm going to have to harness at the end game here, uh, or the late game, uh, to help me uh, survive, as well as that necrotech, who can hopefully help revive my guys. Yeah, and seeing off the infantry. So this is the uh, core of my units. And you can see not the Hakara warriors needed a little bit more help. They were s destroyed uh, trading, I guess, evenly against these Graveguard. But the Sternsmen doing really good. And I needed Hyro Titans and other forces just to tip the tides. Uh, so yeah, things are going not so well. Hyro Titan here down to half health. Not quite sure where the accompanying Necrotech is. He's going to have to come back and help him out. And Tomb Princes, man, been doing work in the center. Uh, but focused as they are, but var by Vargolf's Terrorgeist, etc. Yikes. But the bow is still up and running. Going to be focusing on Isabella, but they, every time I fire at one of the uh, the enemy heroes, uh, Indy is going to realize that this is a main threat to him. He's going to come and charge in. Uh, here's my Necrotech. So he's going to try and heal up. Uh, this Hyro Titan. I've got Halberds, etc. into these Blood Knights and um, Crypt Horrors. So, okay. I can start to get a little bit of a buff here. Uh, Kalita also helping clean up these forces. So the right flank is mine. Indy has piecemeal engagements everywhere. Looks like I will win against the Graveguard here. I'll win there. I will probably... Ooh, it's gonna be... Yeah, probably Indy's way. Oh no, he's taken off with the Terror Guys to heal up. So I'll win this. So it looks like I'm winning a lot of the little minor ground engagements. So, actually, things are turning around somewhat, somehow. But again, the main problem is going to be the fact that he still has these flying monsters and um, a good health on his Fargo and Isabella as well. Let's watch a bit of this. Cherry guy's munching into my bows. But... Numbers-wise, I am starting to get a handle on things. Like we said, I've been able to save some of my uh, elite spears and halberds for the late game, which means I can kind of protect my last entities. I'm gonna focus up on this terror guys and watch as his health starts to drop pretty precipitously. Um, actually, not as quick as I would have thought, but he's gonna get surrounded here and poked at pretty well. Blood Knights trying to engage with the uh, Nekesh Scorpion Legions. These guys do have po uh, poison, so they should be able to debuff a little bit of these Blood Knights. But these guys are resilient. See how this is going? Yeah, this is going to be a slaughter on this front. And the Tomb Prince somehow is still holding up, but uh, this may be his final breath. Man, he's surprisingly tanky there. There he goes, starting to drop. But okay, he's been able to handle that guy and the Iro Titan kind of here healed up uh, pretty decently by the Necro Tech and Kalita also next to him so we were able to see off the monsters and now all of a sudden things are getting a little bit dicey by Indy because the light game uh, halberds and spears going to be coming up and focusing on these whites and going to be able to ward off some of these big monsters uh, and meanwhile my own heroes which are pretty low Ooh, oh is that it oh, I thought I was getting a bit of a heal nope yeah, so, doing okay for my guys. Kalita in the center helping out with the bows. Um, now the main problem that I have is, yeah, maybe I have some infantry that can start to rebuff his guys. You can see him starting to get a little bit of a distance from me. The main problem I have is going to be a little bit of ganging up in terms of the lords. If he pounds everything uh, against, you know, first the higher titan, uh, and then goes after my main Kalita, everything else is going to collapse. So it looks like he's going to be going for that. Noticing that that is a distinct threat. I'm going to come in with my other guys to try and help out. Tower Titan, not going to be doing much damage, but holding out with a ton of health. Ooh, and he's blasting into those guys. And I have my own Kalita as well. Let's, let's pop off the HUD and just take a look at this. Got a fair amount of more damage to my guys. Uh, that's okay. You do what you got to do to stay alive. Ooh, and he's going to be focusing on the enemy queen here. I do want to see some laser beams directed right down at her. The staff pound will 
Here. <laughs> Will be enough for here. And there comes Kalita. So a little bit of a face off there. Just as was, she was thinking of doing that, a Terror Geist is going to come in. Lots of units circling around. The. Uh, oh my god, this is so much. Uh, damage being put on me so it looks like this could be the end the balance bar tipping very very low for me necrotech is going to charge in to try and help out some of the enemy lords are going to be pulled out the white here trying to get uh, killing blow but he does go down just after he's chasing kalita some of my henchmen helping out and i'm gonna have to sit her out of the fight and regen but it looks like these bows somehow still alive and this is going to be pretty critical with their um ability to take away enemy armor should be able to help out against some of these units of focus fire on some of the big lords. And this uh, Hero Titan down to super low health. We'll see how this goes. But the Terror Guys, let's see that. I'm going to try and just as Indy was focusing on my guys, Kalidia and my other units are going to help focus on these units. Should be able to try and take her off here. It's not quite nestled in my ranks. But I think I might be able to kill him. Oh yeah, and with that snake venom. She's gonna chase him off. Grab him by the tail. Looks like he does get out of that fight. Oh, I am vacation in the heck, so he's gonna start to to regen. But we've been getting uh pretty good stuff. I don't know, somehow my infantry is just being super resilient. The halberd's thrown in the mix really good against these anti-large. Uh Tomb Guard as well. I guess having a pretty good sustain here in the endgame. Um against some of these depleted monsters. So overall, my guy's doing an admirable job. Um, although the bows are going to finally go down by the last remaining Blood Knights. Uh, but at least these guys are being kept away from the main engagement. Not too worried about that. God, he's a huge towering force. And there he goes, lasering through the wing, trying to sever that guy. And I believe that might have been enough damage to get him to crumble. Lots of staff uh, blows there. This Hyra Titan getting pretty low, 1,200 health. And Isabella with tons of health as well. Oh my god, my High Queen there was able to kill out the Terror Geist. Uh, kill off the Terror Geist, sorry. But uh, she's really, really low. 643 health could get focused uh, by the enemy. If she goes down, we'll probably have a mass route. Or mass crumbling. Oh, but this is key. The Necrotech actually being in the mix as well. Just being uh, a source of just tankiness. It looks like... Isabella here, not quite sure what she's casting. If she had some damage spells left, she would have probably popped it on the High Queen. But the High Queen here having to snake around, quite literally, through the ranks to stay alive. And now, yeah, she can't take many more hits. And all she's going to have to do is just ping pong around. But she's been serving as a pretty good distraction. This Hyra Titan still alive. Uh, and it looks like we've been able to turn the tides. Killing the enemy monsters now leaves Indy with just Blood Knights and Isabella von Karstein, although the Winds of Magic are low for her, so we'll see how she can sustain. And he's going to charge in. I'm going to tell my Halberts to try and hold as best they can. And this may be his only path to victory. Repeated strikes. Hammer and anvils here. But every charge, he is going to lose a couple more men here and there. He would love to circle around, as he's doing over here. To try and isolate my guys, so I'm forced to choose between... Chasing after the knights or chasing after the hero. The necrotech, like I said, being invaluable just as a, you know, to serve as a pick here to try and guard my hero titan. Looks like she's been going after Queen Kalita. Again, I'm going to have to kind of uh, bitch out of this one and pull around being extremely slippery, <laughs> pulling through my own halberds. And there you go. Still alive. So had he had maybe another uh, white or something to chase her down, things would have gone another way. Same thing with any force that could land a blow against this hero titan would be excellent. And he's trying to do that. I mean, he's circling around. God, she's resilient. And again, uh, the fact that I still have these a massive infantry to hide behind is going to be pretty critical. Here he goes. He decides, okay, I can't get Kalita. I'm going to go after your higher titan. So he's just engaged on all fronts. High Queen also in the center. Deciding to tackle all of my infantry. Which is pretty decent. But now over here... Kalita going to be uh, allowed to just 1v1 these Blood Knights, doing pretty good at it, spitting uh, Venom at them and helping to take them out slowly but surely to save my Hyro Titan. We'll see how close he is to dying, down to 482 health, so just a little bit more damage. We'll be able to see him off. He's crumbling. I'm starting to get some crumbling on a lot of my guys, so if they can be taken out, 390 health, 
Ooh, but just as we were thinking he might be taken out, the enemy is killed off. So that's going to relieve pressure. And now High Queen Kalita is brave enough to come in here, <laughs> yell uh, some shit at her, and then pull out of that engagement. Isabella being pretty pissed at the uh, how this turned around. And there goes my queen taunting her as she walks about. Getting all kinds of curses. Ooh, and the Hyrule Titan does get killed. So she's not going down without a fight. So she does kill my Hyrule Titan. But now I come and snap at her. Ooh, that was pretty awesome. So she does get the killing blow there. Despite being a little bit uh, sketchy. Well, at least she didn't run away and stand out of the fight. She did come and deliver the final blow here. Uh, so I, I would say she regained her glory in that last little moment. But anyways, that was a close run affair. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Very, very fun to play with any pride. I do love these large battles. They definitely play out longer, and you get to play with a lot of different types of units that you don't traditionally do. I also like this type of engagement between kind of the forces of the undead, uh, and especially the two uh, kind of queens or um, main ladies facing off was pretty awesome. So yeah, I look forward to playing a little bit more of the competitive play with traditional standards, seeing how the Tomb Kings can stack up against... Uh, the uh, the vampire counts and some of the top tier uh, other factions, but so far looking pretty good, pretty capable. Uh, let's look at the stats here, see how things traded out. So Nehakar Warriors pretty good, or sorry, um, Nehakar Horseman pretty good, although most of that was against zombies. But it was pretty invaluable, I would say, to be able to knock about Indy's uh, fluff infantry line. Because overall, that allowed my main infantry line to hold out that much longer, do a little bit more damage. The massing of the spears was actually a pretty good move. Um, you saw just how much it was able to shut down his attempt at rear strikes um, with his cavalry. Guard my archers, and also do a fair amount of late game with the halberds. And yeah, the tomb guard doing pretty good. So some of the elite infantry for the tomb guard is pretty, uh, pretty solid. Same with the halberds. Bows doing okay, just a little bit of pinpricks of damage. I would say the Ushapti with great bows were very, very much underused in this battle. A um, little bit of mispike on them. They were originally doing a ton of damage against the Terror Geist. I should have continued to either focus fire on them or a single unit of Blood Knights, but instead they got uh, confused shooting at various targets, and eventually the main lines crashed, and these guys kind of had to be called in uh, to plug the gap. So very underutilized. Uh, I think otherwise in a typical matchup, these guys should... Uh, prioritize monsters, be guarded by a halberd unit, and just kind of sit out and snipe high-value targets. Uh, so pretty good. Scorpion's also probably not a good pick against um, the enemy, mostly because, um, yes, they're anti-infantry, but they can get ganged up by the Crypt Horrors pretty handedly. So probably dropping a Tomb Scorpion, yes, maybe one is good to help out in the infantry fight, but probably just swapping him out for a couple halberds will really help you hold out against these Crypt Horrors. Uh, in terms of any prize side, I mean, tried and true with the Grave Guard, you're going to be able to chop through a ton of stuff uh, cost effectively with them. Blood Knights also in Crypt Horrors. I mean, this was overall a pretty handy build uh, that I would definitely bring. Um, Crypt Horrors, I believe, are going to be a must when you're facing off against the uh, Tomb Kings. Like I said, just the ability to swarm constructs and do a lot of damage. Same thing with the Blood Knights as well, circling about, knocking about infantry, but also with the anti large there, construct killers. So they have a lot of tools uh, up on their side, as well as the ability to have. Uh, some pretty powerful man uh, magic to take down the, the Tomb King. So I'm interested, like I said, to see more of these matchups in the future. But that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. See you in the next one. Peace out.